County College family. This is the Virtual Cafe powered by Student Life and Activities. Today's episode number 71 is dedicated to our returning student scholarships for the 2021-2022 semester, season, academic year, whatever you want to call it. We are here. We have the ultimate guide for you today on scholarships at Essex County College for returning students. First, I'm going to go over all the scholarships available and our criteria for each individual scholarship. We're going to learn if you are eligible or not eligible. Then Mr. Graham, our very special guest, is going to go over the application and the application process with you. We are going to cover the entire thing today. You're going to be receiving your application for scholarships in your email, and this video will be available to you on YouTube to reference as you need. Let's jump right into it. Our application deadline is August 27th, 2021. The application for your scholarships will be emailed to you in your student email, your Essex email from Mr. Graham later today. So a popular question is, where is the application? It is directly sent to you in your email. Be on the lookout, that, be on the lookout for that later so you can tackle scholarships. Moving on. Your recommendation letters deadline is August 26, 2021. That is the day before. Okay, so any recommendation letters you may be getting from a faith leader from uh, an employer from someone that was in charge of a community project that you were involved with or community service. Okay, I'm sorry, Mr. Graham. I'm not sorry, Mr. Graham, Mr. I, I'm sorry. What's up? So I had a question. So it doesn't have to be from a professor. So you're saying it can be from someone not affiliated with Essex? That, that itself depends on the scholarship. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you the criteria in a second. So it might be a little different okay. for, depending on the scholarship. Yes, but but to answer your question, most of the time they do the faith leader um, requirement is like for a, like a specific scholarship, but genuinely somewhere where you've worked or somewhere that you've had a supervisor would be somewhere you want to get a recommendation letter from. Okay. All right. So make sure students that you are emailing the recommendation letter because it's not a part of the Google form. You are emailing it to jgram1 at essex.edu. That is Mr. Graham, Director of Student Life. Okay, so you're going to email that to him and the subject of that email, so we keep everything nice and organized for everybody, fall 2021 scholarships, your name. Don't type your name, type in your actual name. So your recommendation letters need to be sent the day before the application is due to Mr. Graham. Make sure you correctly subject the email, fall 2021 scholarships, your name. This video will be available later today on YouTube, so do not fret if you're not writing any of this down. We're moving on. The awardees will be contacted via email no later than September 8th, 2021, right? These are returning student scholarships. We want you to use this money for your semester that you've returned for, which is the fall. So if you are the recipient of one of these scholarships, you will be contacted via email no later than September 8th, 2021. All right, folks, let's jump right into our available scholarships for 2021-22 for returning students. Here's number one, the Academic Engagement Scholarship. You're going to need a 3.0 GPA. Now, this is the only one that is up available for new and returning students, but new students must submit a copy of their high school transcript, seeing as they wouldn't have had any current grades here at the college. You're gonna to need to demonstrate financial need. You'll find that, that is, this is a requirement on most scholarships and it's a very lofty, vague term, demonstrate financial need. So that can be done in a variety of different ways, a myriad of ways, if you will, uh, mostly in writing. So if you're a good writer, that's the time in your essay to demonstrate financial need, which any, I'm sure all of you can do, just be creative about it. Active in campus activities- hey, Excuse and, me for one minute. Yes, Metal. sir. Um, when you said to write that in the essay, that goes towards, they use that as part of your applying for that scholarship? Because yes. I'm new to all this. No so problem. So basically, writing the essay saying, demonstrate my financial needs or financial needs, I can get a scholarship just for writing for that, right? That's what I'm trying to understand. So Am I correct? You are partially correct. So 
with with every scholarship with the application that you're going to get later today it's going to tell you that you need to get two letters of recommendation they need to write a one page essay and that you need a current copy of your academic transcript now the transcript you can print out on your own through web services when you log in the letters of recommendation you're going to have to make a couple phone calls um but the essay is very important now you can write one essay and use it for every single scholarship you don't have to write a separate essay because these are separate committees so like the academic engagement scholarship has its own committee each scholarship has different people looking at this so you're allowed to use that same essay for as many scholarships as you want the essay portion that is your is your area to demonstrate that financial need to talk about the hardships that you may have encountered in the past few years okay that essay is your window to the committee because other than that essay, all they're looking at is your grades. They're looking at numbers and letters. So if you want to let them in on what's in here, that essay is going to be where you do that. So make sure you pay attention to your okay. essay. And, and one more work. question. Surely. Um, when it comes to September, that'd be my last year. I'll be finished. So would this help? Because I'm trying to go to Rutgers after this. So this money would help you during this semester. So you said you're enrolled this semester, right? Yes. This is my last semester coming up in September. Okay. I'm going to go this semester too. So this, yeah, this money would be for this semester. That's why we're going to notify the recipients no later than September 8th, because it's still the beginning of the semester and you still have time to submit that money for payment. All right. Thank you, sir. No problem. Okay. So after you demonstrate financial need, you're going to be also want to be active in campus activities and or community service. And you're going to need to have the ability to participate in new student orientation, community service, open house, and other college related events. Pretty self-explanatory, right? Let's move on. Number two, the Connie Woodruff Memorial Scholarship. This is for students exclusively enrolled in Essex County College's nursing program. So if you are not a nursing major, it's not for you. You're gonna also need to demonstrate academic promise and performance, which can be done with your grades. And you must exemplify perseverance and success through personal challenges. Again, this is where you would be explaining that in your essay. Be creative. Be truthful, be honest, be yourself. Moving on. The Essex County College Foundation Ambassador Scholarship. You're going to need a 3.0 GPA or better. You're going to need to have completed at least one semester or 12 college level credits. You're going to need to demonstrate financial need. Again, that's for your essay. You need to have strong familiarity with the Essex campus and enrollment processes. And you're going to need to have, to want to have the ability to participate in new student orientation, community service, open house, and other college related events. So this is the Essex County College Foundation Ambassador Scholarship. This is for our overachievers. This is for our students who really like to be here, who believe in themselves, believe in their peers, and want to help advance the institution forward. As you can see, you're going to need to participate in various college-related events or willing to in order to receive this scholarship. Please keep that in mind. All right, moving on. The Frank Dillon Primerica Scholarship, right? Primerica, humongous corporation. They have the money to give out for scholarships. We're thankful that they're giving one to you. You're going to need to have a GPA of 2.5 or higher. Demonstrate financial need again. And this is renewable, which I'm not 100% certain, but I, that makes it sound like it is able to be replenished, which I'm sure if you win, will be explained to you by Frank Dillon and or Primerica. Moving on. The Leo Foundation Scholarship. You're going to need a minimum GPA of 3.0 or better. You're going to need to be enroll, enrolled in the science or math program. So if you are not a science or math major, this one is not for you. You're going to need to demonstrate financial need. And you're going to need one recommendation out of the two must be from faculty. And the other must be from a community leader, an employer, faith leader, church representative, what have you. So one from faculty and one from a community leader, employer, church. And I will say this about all the scholarships, that it's probably a good idea to mix it up like that. Maybe don't get two teachers and don't get two employers. I would 
go for one faculty member or teacher that you have potentially bonded with or have a rapport with and get along well with that can speak on behalf of you. And then I would pick your favorite employer or your favorite community leader. Like if you worked for Habitat for Humanity and helped build houses and you had a good project manager, you might want to ask that project manager to write a letter of recommendation, you know, to attest to your work ethic and your perseverance. Okay, so try and, yes. Um, for this, nursing would be included in this? So I believe science is different than health science as far as our divisions are concerned. If anybody knows better than me, feel free to chime in. But I'm pretty sure that what they mean here by science and math is like the lab sciences, like chemistry and physics and biology yeah. and all that good stuff. I'm pretty That's sure correct. That's nursing correct. is, okay, thank you. All right, let's move on. The Sarah, Earl, and Donald Ryan Scholarship, you're gonna to need to demonstrate high financial needs, demonstrate high degree of scholastic achievement and effort, and must be enrolled full time. Now this middle one here, demonstrate a high degree of scholastic achievement and effort. So they're not, they're looking for good grades, but a little bit more specific is they're looking for something that may stand out, something that you've been a part of, something you've done. This could be community service. Uh, this could be some church work for sure. Maybe you did some food distributions uh, over the pandemic. I would consider these, oh, it says scholastic. Okay. So they're looking for an award that you may have received for your scholastic efforts. Doesn't matter if it was in high school or not necessarily in an academic forum, but they're looking for a, a, maybe a previous scholarship or something uh, exceptional that you've done while in school. So think about that one. I believe that is our last. Yes, it is. So let's go over all these really quick. One more time for you. Yeah. Can I ask a question about the last scholarship? Absolutely. Um, now I'm, I'm 30, about to be 34. So I, uh, clearly high school has been a long time ago, but I did have a lot of awards and achievements. With it, is there a time cap? I mean, is there, a, you know, does it matter how long ago it was? I, I would say, I would say no. Um, and I would say, you know, pick one really, really good one. If it's from a long time ago, if it was something special that really stand out, pick one really okay. solid one. Okay, thank you. No problem. All right, let's just run through these again. Again, students. This will all be available on YouTube, on our YouTube channel, SLAO Essex. And I'm sure we will try to notify you on social media and a million other different ways too, to let you know that it's available. We have the Academic Engagement Scholarship, pretty much open to everybody. We have the Connie Woodruff Memorial Scholarship, which is just for nursing students, okay? Health sciences, nursing, it's for you. The Essex County College Foundation Ambassador Scholarship, 3.0 GPA. Again, a lot of folks can are eligible for this, but you have to be willing to put in a little work for Essex as well. Frank Dillon, Primerica, everybody should be applying to this. No reason not to. Every single person in this room today should be applying to this scholarship. Leo Foundation Scholarship 3.0. This is just for our math and science folks again. So this is another exclusive one. Math and science program majors is for you. Is uh, computer science still considered science? Computer science. I have a cheat sheet. I know it's here. Okay. Computer science is math. Yep. So you're good to go. This is for you. Okay. Also, um, when they say demonstrate financial need, is this only eligible for like people who can like get fast and stuff like that? Not necessarily. I, I mean, that, that is what it sounds like, but it's not necessarily the case. So you can, like I said, use that essay to demonstrate your financial aid. They're not just looking at your financial stuff. They're not just looking at your financial aid documents or things like that. I don't, actually don't think they are at all, but uh -oh. that you can demonstrate that financial aid, financial need with words in your essay for sure. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Right. You got it. All right. And lastly, again, the Sarah Earl Donald Ryan scholarship. I want to say that everybody in this room has, has a scholastic achievement. So you all should be applying for this scholarship. Figure it out. All right, Mr. Graham, are you ready for application time? Sure, Mr. Rock. All right. All right. First and foremost, I do want to thank you all students for joining us uh, for this workshop uh, for scholarship applications. I don't know if Mr. Ott will confirm this might be one of the high, highest attended um, ones since we started doing them through our virtual cafe platform. So thank you all for that. Confirmed. All right. 
So um, in a manner to eat, to make things a little bit easier on the student, we've tried with going online in various ways in the past, but this is about as simple as I can make it um, to try and put everything at your fingertips. So as mentioned earlier, you'll receive an email later this afternoon and I have this, the link that will take you to this exact form that you're seeing on the screen, right? Everybody can see the full 2021 semester scholarship application? Yes, yes. All right. Yes. So it'll take you directly to this link. Um, I think I have a setting in there based on something that it captures. You might have to be signed into an email. And of course you should be using your Essex County College uh, student email address regardless, because it's going to ask you for that within the form. Um, pretty much every field that you will see in the scholarship form will be required. So just take your time, read, just put in the information. For the most part, I, I, I eliminated a lot of um, useful, fe useless fields at this point, just to allow you to get straight to what matters, okay? So the first thing that you'll notice within the application is it will ask you what scholarship are you applying for? All right, now this is an open answer text box. So for instance, you can list any scholarships that you are applying for. So if you qualify for the academic engagement scholarship, right? Then I want you to type that there, all right? But make sure that you, you are considered eligible based on the criteria. And then you may be eligible for the Connie Woodruff scholarship, right? And you would just type that there, all right? The next several fields are pretty much straightforward. It's gonna ask you for your Essex County College email address, all right? I happen to have an autofill. It's gonna ask you for your first name, and I'm gonna stop doing this autofill because it's showing y'all entirely too much. And then um, you just complete the fields, all right? Student ID number, all right? Uh, put it in any way you want to structure it. I like to separate mine from my hyphen, all right? Address. All right, zip code, pretty much straightforward. All right. Oh, what can you do? Birth. All right, gender. I may remove this from being mandatory. All right. Make it anything that you identify with. All right. How many credits have you earned? I know all you may not be precise, but don't forget that a part of the scholarship process is also submitting an unofficial copy of your transcript. So you might have a roundabout idea, right? I believe I'm at 37 credits. All right, your major, right? Remember major is, is very pertinent to certain scholarships. List any academic awards, right? So an example of that can be uh, maybe you were inducted into PTK, uh, during the fall 2019 semester, right? This you can just list, right? Uh, and any other achievements, right? Community involvement, right? Participated. So I, to be honest with you, this field is really here because I'm trying to give you as much space outside of your essay to list some of these achievements and things like that, right? So for instance, I, I heard a very, very relevant question. The question um, related to uh, does it matter how old my achievement uh, was accomplished? And the answer is, in, in, in my perspective, no, because there should be no time limit um, on anything that you felt was a success or that you achieved and, and, and the fact that you want to express it because you're proud of yourself, right? Um, so you could have participated in, you know, breast cancer walk, right? It could have been a branch park clean up right two years in a row anything right now here is where mr ott was talking about our 250 word essay 
and we had the the um the presentation um already completed but but this morning i did my best to try to open it up all right because i don't want you to feel restricted so as mr ott said this is your opportunity right and this portion right here e all right a 250 word essay expressing the reason that you believe you deserve to be a scholarship recipient. Please include any contributions you have made to Essex County College uh, and any unique characteristics that have and will contribute to your success as an individual and or demonstrate financial need. I'll change the wording on that, all right? And this is your opportunity because someone asked about um, financial need and, and the FAFSA application. And we understand there's some students who may be borderline. So, you know, a FAFSA application may say that you don't have enough financial need to be awarded, you know, federal aid, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you don't have financial need. Um, and, and some financial need simply isn't captured in, in an online form that you submit, you know, for uh, tuition aid and things like that. And um, this is the opportunity to allow these various committees to get um, a better understanding of who you are, right? Um, the type of person you are, um, the type of goals you may have. You can speak about your academic aspirations, um, you know, your, your career course or where you see yourself in the future, right? This is the time to, um, to really show who you are, all right? Um, you could think of it as, as um, you know, making a presentation to, to people who may find you worthy of being a scholarship recipient. And, um, you know, whether or not your tuition is paid, um, I, I know from my personal experience that scholarships have gone a long way um, for me as a student and probably go a long way for other students. All right. All right. So I'm just going to put that there because I need to go to the next page. All right. But you want to make sure that you complete everything. Do not forget, this is where you submit the essay. In the past, we would have asked for it separately. You have the chance to put it all here, right? You see the box is just gonna keep expanding if you keep typing, all right? But be mindful of your word limit. Um, maybe you wanna do it in a Word document first and then copy and paste it. That way you can utilize all the tools of a spell check, et cetera. And then, um, you would go on to the next, all right? I just wanna say hello to Miss Romano. I see her saying greetings to everyone. If you don't know her, she is the director of our EOF program here at Essex County College, all right? Somebody that you wanna to get to know as well, all right? Especially um, regarding financial need and if you qualify for uh, financial aid and you know uh, the state aid, then you definitely need to um, look into EOF if you haven't already, all right? Hey, Jamil, thank you. I'm, oh, going to, I'm going to put in um, information about EOF, okay? Okay, that's great. We have openings and we have money, so it, you know, it okay. always pays to apply. Okay. All right, thank students, you. so do you, do you hear Ms. Romano? All right, she has money, all right? So, so just a note that the scholarship application may not be your only source of some other uh, financial aid and, and relief, right? Can I ask a question, please? I am part of the EOF program, um, and I, I believe that once I, um, once I renew my FAFSA application, don't I automatically get re-enrolled into it every semester, or is there anything I have to do again? Because I applied back in spring, and I was I'm in the program. Oh yeah, sure. Um, did you get it? Were you funded in the spring? Mm -hmm. Yes, did I was. Did you get any money from us in the spring? <laughs> yes, I did. Okay, good. <laughs> then if you did your financial aid for next year, you should be good for the fall. Okay, All right? perfect. And okay. there's no renewal. Is it an re annual renewal or, or I'm just no, automatically? No, no, no. Uh, no, it should just roll right on over unless, you know, you got kicked out of school or something horrible happened. But, you know, okay. what do you, honey, stop by and check in always with us, Okay. I do. I speak with my counselor frequently. Um, okay. I, yeah, I do speak with my personal counselor. Um, I try to check in with her um, Good. as much as possible. All right, dear. That sounds Thank great. You. Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Graham, excuse me. Yes. 
Um, this question is for you. I do not have this email where the forms are, the scholarship application form. I don't have it in my email. No, no, not yet. You'll have it after the program. All right. Thank you. Okay. This is, this is the walkthrough, but you will get the link that will take you to this exact form. It will look just like this. It will interact just like it is with me on this screen share. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. And we're almost done too. So you'll have it shortly. I, I, I'm glad that you're ready to get started. All right. So here it is. It brings us to the second page. It's pretty much asking you to certify that everything that you said is accurate and as complete as can be. All right. That you have completed the 250 word essay, right? You did that on the previous page. You will need to submit a current unofficial transcript from your most recent educational institution, whether your last semester was here at Essex or for the, the, the um, rare scholarship that is open for new students who may just be coming from high school. If you can get a digital version of that transcript, that will suffice. Your two letters of recommendation, as Mr. Ott said, will be submitted via email. Again, you see where to get it submitted, right? jgram1 at essex.edu. And then your academic transcript. Well, how do, how, do, how do I upload that, Mr. Graham? Well, everyone may not know and or be capable of it. I will do my best to show you. If you encounter issues, I'll do my best to help you along the way in the future, okay? So um, I was gonna do this an easy way, but I'll take it to the very beginning, all right? So if you don't know, you can access, you can see the webpage now. Yes. Yes. Yep. Okay. You can access your academic transcript from your web services portal. All right. You can get there from the main college page. I know the shortcut. I just type web services.essex.edu. It redirects me. Enter secure area, right? You have to log in with your ID number. Correct, right, Joe? And then pin 062876. I always get this wrong, Mr. Graham. I always ask you. <laughs> okay, here we go. All right. Nice. We did it. And then we want to access our academic transcript. So we basically want our student services. It's been a long time since I've done this. So I'll go to student and financial aid. Okay. I want to go to my student records. I want to view my academic transcript, all levels, all right? You can select undergraduate, transcript type, web, web official, I'm not sure, you probably get charged. We don't need official. Submit, there it is, my academic transcript, Essex County College. Look at all those A's. EOF student, by the way. Wow. All right. And then you want to print it, right? But we're really not going to print it. I'm going to click print. I'm going to do Microsoft print to PDF. I'm going to click print. I get a dialog box. I'm going to save this as Gmail Graham on official transcript. 8-10-2021. It's saving. Make sure you know where you're saving it at. It's going to my downloads. Save. All right. I'm done with this. I can click exit. I don't know when I was a student, even as an employee, I just like to have this on deck as a tab in my browser. That's just me. Now I can go back. I can click add file. Select files from your device, downloads, here it is. All right, I'm not gonna add more files. I'm gonna click upload. Look at that. I'm going to click submit. Your response has been recorded. All right. That Thank easy. you. All right. You are welcome. So are there any questions? I mean, I tried to make this, this part as easy as possible. You do have to reach out to your professors to make sure that they have to send those letters of recommendation. 
what we will attempt to do on your behalf is we will um, work with the academic side so we can make professors aware of the fact that despite that it is the summer and, and, and many of them may not be on campus, that students will be reaching out to them for um, letters of recommendations for the fall 2021 scholarships and that they, they may be receiving emails and they'll be made aware of the deadline as well. I just want to follow up to what Mr. Graham was saying about professors. So, I mean, in case you don't, are not able to get out, reach out to a professor in response back, would it be okay if the two letters came from an outside source or do you definitely have to have one from a professor? I'm going to tell you to get what you can get. The most important thing is that no matter where your source is for your letter of recommendation, you want to get a genuine letter of recommendation to the best of your ability. You want to get it from that employer that 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 really knows um, the extent the extent of your capabilities, right? Who speaks of you glowingly, right? The same thing with your professor, right? You want to go to the professor if possible, right? That that may just know you a little bit better than the others because you actually utilize those office hours. Um, but in any event, I'm going to tell you to get what you can get. But as, as well, you can also let me know and say, well, you know. Um, because it's going to happen, you know, you're going to work on it today, you're going to send your professors the um, email tomorrow, and then you're going to wonder whether or not they got to it next Monday, right? So you inevitably, you're going to be asking me, did you get the letter of recommendation? Just note that, just send me an email if you felt it wasn't sent, and, but you also have to let me know who it was um, requested from. And then um, feel free that if you want to send your professor the email requesting the letter of recommendation, feel free to copy me in it so I know who you sent it to, right? You can copy me in your initial outreach, then I know I should be expecting it, you know, from um, Ms. Romano, right? Or Ms. Beretta, right? Or anybody else that you go to, any other professor, right? Maybe uh, Professor Pernia, right? Dr. Bridgeforth, it could be from anybody, right? but you can copy me in it. There's no harm in that. Okay. It, provi it, it provides, it really actually gives me a heads up and it's just going to get filed in the folder too um, for fall 2021 scholarship. So that when I go check, then I know, oh, well, this professor still didn't send me this, right? Okay. Because, th because things happen. And what I've learned is that, you know, sometimes even with the, um, the scholarship committees, I may have some explaining to do. You may not be unique to not being able to get um, two letters of recommendation from a professor, right? So I, I have to, you know, even view it all in, in, in its totality. Maybe a complete exception may have to be made, right? So don't worry about that. You worry about expressing yourself in your 250 word essay. You send out the notification to get the professors to do it. You follow up with them. If you need help, you let me know, right? And and, and you take care of what, what is in your control. Okay, thank you. Right? Mm -hmm. Ms. Romano has an excellent question in the chat that I did not think of. Can students get a scholarship more than once? Mr. Graham, do you know the answer to this? It has happened. Okay. So it's possible? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. That being said, students, if you're eligible, do not hesitate. Apply for everything that you think you're eligible for. The worst that could possibly happen is that you hear nothing back or you don't get the scholarship. That's it. Mm -hmm. Nothing bad's gonna happen to you. Throw your balls wherever you can throw them, please. Any other questions? We are here for you. Uh, yes, I have another question. So um, I know like we could contact for one of the recommendations we could ask the teacher, right? But let's say for the employer, do they have to email you or do I have to get uh, they write the rec recommendation letter and then they send it to me and then I send it to you or yeah. how's it going to yeah. work? That's how it works. You know what? Saying. You know what? Okay. Great question. So I'll have to include a mailing address. Is that what you're saying? Is that what you're alluding to? Yes. They can email it to me though. Okay. okay? All right. But, but I will include a mailing address because that is an oversight. All right. That All that right. may that may be the the option that someone may want to choose. All right. Even even one of your professors may say they wanted to come through 
mail. And some of your professors will send it to me through in office mail, despite I said email it. All right. So, yes. OK. okay. Um, we could still send it to the, the same and, and email you have. Office. Yes. Even if like, because I know sometimes there's that restriction where like only school emails could send it back and forth to each other, not any other. I don't have that much of a restriction. Okay. Um, and if you feel it was sent to me and, and I haven't replied, because even when um, I get letters of recommendation, I like to reply to let the professor know that it was received. All right. OK. Mm. All right. Thank you. We have uh, Nick Mendez, SGA vice president in the chamber with us today. Hey, Nick. Um, Nick. Also, hey, while, while we're doing this presentation, I got an email notification of Nick asking me to write him a recommendation letter. Here's what I'm going to tell you. Yes, of course. No problem. Okay. You get a live answer. Here's <laughs> the one K that that I'm going to tell you. The one buyer beware is that it's me. So you never know what's going to be in that letter. <laughs> Damn, Nick, are you sure, me, Nick? Me, I'm sure. I'm going I'm to, like, like Mr. Ott said, I'm going to throw my balls wherever and uh, see what happens, right? Go for the gamble. Listen, that reminds me, okay? When I get asked to write a letter of recommendation, I always recall the fact that I need some information from the student to actually write the letter, all right? So if you are asking faculty or, or staff or like a Mr. Rot, you know, um, give them something to go by. So so it eliminates the back and forth. All right. So you can say, you know, Mr. Ott, um, you know, well, I can't really use Nick as an example. But if 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 Nick, uh, if Mr. Ott didn't know Nick's major. Right. If he says, um, Mr. Ott, you know, I'm an engineering major, you know, um, this is my fourth semester. Give them as much information, too to go in there because sometimes we can forget what information to put in until we actually sit down to write the letter. Then I have to wait for a response from you to learn your major, right? And, and things like that, all right? So just give them some information, you know, um, that may just be necessary for them, right? Because if I speak about a student, you know, um, I would like to speak about their major, right? Um, talk about, you know, what their GPA is, right? You might wanna let them know what the GPA is, right? Um, because some maybe they might relate that to how to how hard you work in the classroom, right? So just give them the basic information to kind of begin with. So I'll put that. Let me put this in the chat, right? So you know, um, you know, major. Uh, you want to give them um, a GPA? They may ask for. All right. Uh, you may want to, you know list some achievements, right? Um, because one way to look at it is the essay is you selling yourself. The letter of recommendation is someone else selling you. All right, so how do you wanna be packaged? Make it easy, frame it, give them something to work with, right? In English, you learned about it, it's called an outline, right? I'm gonna give Mr. Ott an outline. If you don't remember, Mr. Ott, my major is accounting. My GPA is 3.96, right? I was inducted into PTK in the fall. I don't know, Ms. Romano. I don't even want to tell him, but a long time ago, <laughs> right? I was, <laughs> you know, I'm a proud member of EOF, right? I attend all my forums. I give, them, give, them, give them something to write about, right? And then some professors won't need it. They'll be able to talk exactly how you performed in the classroom, right? How you excelled on all your exams, right? How you helped your peers, right? So if your recommendation, um, you know, if, if, if someone's writing your recommendation, hey, Mr. Ott may not know that Nick, um, you know, but it has to be absolutely true, right? But Nick may absolutely um, tutor or help peers in math, right? And then if you're an EOF student, Ms. Romano may know it for a fact because you may be an EOF tutor, right? So you want to go to the people that can kind of also speak to, to, to what you're doing, you know, within the institutional space as well. All right. And, 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 and don't think that, you know, your contributions don't matter, even if we were taking classes online, right?
because I'm sure some of you all were the students who were always asking questions and moving the discussion, right? Professors remember that, right? So go to those that, that, that can speak to your character, your capabilities, your abilities the best, right? And we all, we all have those people, right? I'll give you and an don't, example. But don't be afraid to ask them. Right. Always ask. I want to tell you this, students, just to give you an example, like me and Nick, I can't speak for Nick academically other than looking at his transcript and seeing that he has good grades. What I can speak for is the work I have done with him, the student government work, all the contactless food distributions we've done. I've watched him bust his butt. I've watched him go crazy. So I, I can speak for him in a different capacity, not academically, but like work-wise, like professionally, which is like right here with academics, as far as I'm concerned, you know, both are very important. So like I was saying earlier, like Mr. Graham was saying too, you know, just mix it up. Get that one good faculty that you have a great rapport with. Get that one good employer, the employer that you're proud to work for. You know, like that's what you want. You don't want a recommendation letter from from a teacher that you maybe got along with them real good, but you bombed their class. You know, that's not a recommendation letter you want to get because even though you guys like each other, you won't be able to speak to your successes. You know, I can speak to Nick's successes. That's why I would have an easy time writing him a letter. Anybody have any questions? Um, I, I have a response. Okay. All right. Um, let me see. It was Carolina. She asked, can a club advisor count as a community leader? Yes. Right. Can a member of your church clergy count as a community leader? Yes. All right. Um, and there may be other examples that I may not be thinking of. All right. We took you from the criteria of the scholarships all the way to Mr. Graham showing you how to convert your transcript to a PDF using print to PDF. We took you the whole way there. It's all here. So reference this video as many times you need to. The application was pretty straightforward, but it can be a little confusing. So everything will be in that video. will be emailed to you. Applications start today. Today is August 10th. I actually had to look at the screen to see what day it was because I forgot. I don't know if that's bad or not. But the last day that you got to get these applications back, August 27th. Recommendation letters in the day before August 26th. So recommendation letters, August 26th. Application back to us or Google form. You know, you, you complete your Google form by Friday, August 27th and your recommendation letters the day before. And what time is the um, applications coming out that you're gonna be sending them? As soon as I can, um, I'm gonna take a five minute stretch. I'm gonna compose the email. I'm gonna make it as short as possible just to be able to send it the first time. All right? Okay, Mr. Graham. Thank it's you, coming. <laughs> it's coming. All <laughs> Thank right? you. Um, Cause um, I have a friend, he was trying to get in, but he's not receiving emails from the school. Okay, listen. If he's a student, can, yes. can you please forward him? Forward That's what him I was going to do today. Did, and then also give him my email address so he can email me from what email address he is receiving communication from so we can try to work that out. Because that I asked that. him, did he receive this link? He said no. Yeah, this needs that we need to fit. But maybe I went to his junk, his spam, because it's an email that's going to a group list. But okay, I'll let him know. We'll work it out. Right, thank you, sir. All right. Everybody enjoy the day. Good night. I, just to, you too. I wanted to say thank you too for being so thank um, you. detailed. Thank you so much. Of course, no problem. Uh, Is Ismail in the chat asks? I think he asks, do uh -huh. we have to be precise with the wording of fall twenty one on the letters of recommendation? Like no, that, I did nah. see that question. I apologize for not at answering. No, just get the letter of recommendation. You address it. Address it, dear scholarship committee. All right, or dear selection committee or dear committee. Don't don't get hung up, but you don't have to include that. No. Okay, we want to thank you all for tuning in to the virtual cafe today. We went over all of our <laughs> returning scholarships for 2021 and 2022. This video will be available on YouTube. And if you're watching it now on YouTube, thanks for coming and checking it out. All this information will remain here forever. Use it as you need, reference the video as much as you as you want. If you have any other suggestions or videos that we should make for you to help our students, 
please let me know. J-O-T-T at Essex.edu. We're always willing to hear from our students and improve our programming. We hope that you and your families are doing well today. We hope that you are staying cool because it is getting pretty hot out. And don't get sick. All right, y'all. We will see you soon. Stay safe. Take care. Bye.